Hi and welcome to this DCP Word tutorial. In today's tutorial, let's go ahead and open up the web browser and we look at this blog post I created, Definitive Up-to-Date Guide for Social Media Image Sizes. So I created this blog post. If you scroll down, you can click on any of these links here and they'll take you to specific sizes for different types of social media accounts. So I've covered Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, YouTube, Google My Business and Reddit. And I'll create some more as well as I go along. So if you click on Twitter, you can see all of the different sizes and all of the different image types that you can upload to Twitter. So I'll put a link to this blog post in the YouTube description if you want a more detailed explanation uh, in written form um, about different social media image sizes. Okay, let's go ahead and close down this blog post and that will take you directly to my Twitter page. So we can see my Twitter page here. We've got a header up here, we've got a logo, and we've got various images that have been uh, posted onto Twitter profile, right? So the first thing we wanna look at is really, how do we add a logo here in this particular position? And how do we make sure the logo displays correctly uh, within the realms of this circular shape? Okay, I'm just gonna open up this little image quickly and it shows us the exact dimensions we need to use to create a Twitter profile image. So the image itself is gonna be 720 by 720 pixels, but we wanna add this white space around the edge and we're gonna keep our logo within the realms of this blue section here. The reason to do that is that it always makes sure that your logo displays correctly on desktops and mobile devices. It doesn't need to be a logo, it could be a picture of yourself, for example. It can be anything that you want it to be. But if we were to close down this image quickly and look at the circle, we don't want it to sit too close to the edge, right? We call this a bit of white spacing around the edge to make sure our logo sits nicely. So to do this, I'm gonna do it in Photoshop. I'm gonna open up Photoshop here. I'm gonna press Control and N to create a new document. It's gonna be 720 by 720 at 72 pixel resolution. I'm gonna click Create. So we've got this simple white square here. And I want to, and if we look at this image again, we want to add an 80 pixel gap around the edge, right? So to do that, let's go ahead and click on the rectangle tool here, the rectangle tool. And we want to, we can choose any color. I'm just gonna happen to choose this sort of gray color. It doesn't really matter too much. Maybe we use that red so it kind of stands out quite a lot so you can see it a bit more clear. And we're just gonna draw a little shape here. So the shape is not perfect. We need to set the width here to 720, so we're gonna set it to 720, and then we need to set its height to 80 pixels, 80. And then we just wanna center that out, so let's go ahead and click on the Move tool, and just drag it so that it snaps to the top here. All right, so we've got the gap here now, we know that we can't put our logo in this space here, basically, right? So if we click that and press Control C, or Command C, and then Control V, or Command V on the Mac, to copy, and we'll drag it down to the bottom, then we'll copy it one more time, so let's press Control C, and Control V or Command C and Command V on the uh, on the uh, Apple Mac. Let's just do that one more time. And then we want to rotate this one. So let's just move our mouse to the edge and we're going to rotate it. Hold down the Shift key and rotate it all the way around and we drag it onto this side here. And then we'll create one more. So let's just left click out, select that object, Control C and Control V to copy, to make a copy, right? Let's just make a copy. Uh, let's see copy it here and we'll drag it across to this side here. So we've got this spacing around the edge and we know that our logo should not sit off the edge of here. So what I'll do now is go ahead and find my logo. So I've got a copy of my logo here. I'm just gonna drag it into Photoshop and I'm going to hold down the Shift key and the Alt key on my keyboard. So I hold down Shift and Alt and use the mouse to resize the logo. I don't, want it to, I don't want it to be too close to this edge or overlap this edge. I want it to be roughly around here somewhere, something like this, right? Something like this should be pretty good. And then we can just go ahead and hide all of these red elements. So we're left with the logo. And if your logo is quite tall, then you wanna make sure it doesn't hit the top. If it's quite wide, then you wanna make sure it doesn't hit the sides. And if you size your logo correctly like this, you'll find that you can use it on Instagram, you can use it on your Facebook page, on you know loads of different profiles. Uh, you can also use it on probably LinkedIn as well. Lots of different profiles. If you size your logo correctly in the first place, then you can go ahead and use it on all the different social media accounts. It will save you a lot of time. Let's go ahead and export this. So we press Control Shift uh, Alt and W, which is a bit of a shortcut, isn't it, right? And we're gonna leave it as a JPEG file. We'll set it at maximum quality. 
and we're going to click the export button and let's just go to my computer let's go to my desktop and we're going to go to this twitter account here and we're just going to call it twitter dcp dash logo dash zero one and we'll save it there on my desktop so we've got this folder here now and that folder contains uh this twitter image right this little twitter image here of my logo so let's try and upload that to twitter and see how it looks on the actual profile so we'll go to twitter and we'll click on the logo uh we can see it actually we want to edit profile here edit and then we'll click here to upload a new logo and we'll go to my desktop uh, let's go to my desktop and we'll go to the twitter account and we'll select that logo and click open right and now Twitter is asking, do we want to zoom in or zoom out? We don't need to do anything because we put the white spacing around there and we did everything correctly in the first place. We no longer need to zoom in and out. You could zoom in a little bit more if you wanted to, but if we click apply and click save, we can see the logo sits there perfectly, right? That's how I would want it to be. You can put a different colored background, just go into Photoshop and change the background color if you want to do that. But that's how I would size the logo quickly for the Twitter profile image. Okay, so on the Twitter profile, we've done the logo and we've got this background image here, right? We've got this background, the header image, and we can create a new Twitter header image. As default, it will display an image there, but we want to create something custom, something. So my one just says free software tutorials, London web designers, right? So I do a lot of tutorials if you follow me on YouTube and uh, I build a lot of websites for customers as well. So my main business is building websites, but I like to do a lot of tutorials and share knowledge. So I want to show you how to create this header image up here. Now I know the image itself, if we just go ahead and check this folder and we open up this file, let's have a look at this image here. It tells us that it's going to be 500 pixels high and 1500 pixels wide. Remember, if you want to access any of these images, you can find them in my blog post. A lot of these images or all of them will be displayed in my blog post as well. And I'll put a link to that in the YouTube description. So we want to create an image that's 1500 wide and 500 high. Then we want to add this white spacing. Now the white spacing itself can actually contain visual content. So if it's like a picture of a forest or whatever it might be, you can put content up here. It doesn't really matter. But I would avoid, I would avoid putting like text information too high or too close to the edges um, it just makes things look a little bit better when your text doesn't sit very very close to the edge you can see I reserve some space here 415 by 200 and the reason we've done we've done that if we just minimize this a second um, you can see that the logo covers this space here right and we don't want to put any text in this area where it's marked red because if we put text here the logo is going to overlap it so we want to avoid that let's go ahead and create this particular image in photoshop so let's go ahead and open up photoshop okay we want to create a new document so let's press ctrl and n and we'll set this to 1500 by 500 pixels right because our artwork if we check it quickly it tells us that it needs to be 500 wide and 1500 500 tall and 1500 wide so we just make sure we create the artwork at the right size and that's 5, 1500 wide 500 high that's perfect let's click the create button and we've got this blank canvas here so we need to create that white spacing around the edge just to make sure we don't put any content in those areas quick way to do that if you still got your original file here really we should save this right it's a piece of work that we've done so let's go to file save as quickly and we just go to my computer let's just save it to my computer and we've got we're in the twitter assets right so let's just call this twitter logo zero one so we've got a png file of this so if we ever want to edit it or change the logo or change the background color we can easily open up photoshop change it and then re-upload a jpeg file i just open up this this particular file because i want to just grab this red section so i'm going to in fact we'll grab um we'll grab two of them let's grab this top one here first so we'll press ctrl c or command c to copy and then we'll go over to this new canvas and press ctrl c sorry ctrl v or command v to paste it we're just going to drag it to the very top center it out and we want to make it the same width as what this canvas is and that would be 1500 all right we could just go and create this same shape again in photoshop but we've got it on the other image so let's just reuse it and we'll go back here again click on this one press ctrl c to copy and then press ctrl v on this one to paste it and we want to set the height here to 500 let's set it to 500 and we'll drag it to the right hand side here and then we're just going to uh let's see 500 did we set five no, actually we've got the number wrong here let's set it to 500 that would be perfect right it's on the side here snap to the edge 
So let's click on this right hand one, press Control C and Control V to paste it. We'll drag it to the left side. And then finally, we'll click on this top one, press Control C, and then Control V to paste that one, and we'll drag it down. All right. Now we've got the, the white spacing. This is what I call white spacing. We, we can put visual content in this area, but we don't really want to put any written content in this area. Now um, we want to go ahead and create this reserve section down here in the corner. So if we look at the artwork, it tells us that it needs to be 415 by 200. So I'm going to create that in a different color just to make it easier to see. So we'll click on the red swatch here. Let's just make it blue for now and we'll create um, a new rectangle shape. So we're going to click on the rectangle tool. We'll drag a small shape out and we want it to be 415 wide. So the width is going to be 415 and the height will be 200 pixels, 200 pixels. Let's just uh, set it to 200. So we click on the move tool and we can drag that into the bottom left hand corner and we'll make sure that we don't put any written content in this area basically right so anything white is really where we can put written content any important information maybe a picture of yourself or whatever you want to place there you can place it in this white area here okay let's go ahead and open up this little folder on my desktop and i want to drag a picture of myself so we're going to these assets i've got this picture here i'm going to drag it into photoshop because i want to add that image to this twitter background right so let's click on this image here and we'll go into select Let's let Photoshop do all of the work and we'll click uh, subject. So Photoshop will draw a trace around a uh, picture of me and we can just press Control C to copy, move over to here, press, uh, let's click on the top layer in fact, press Control V to paste. And then we can just grab the handle and we just resize this so it fits a bit more sensibly on the canvas, right? So something like this. Now, the key here is, is that um, this red spacing can can actually contain visual content, right? But we don't really want it to contain any um, written information. That's the key. So we'll kind of center this out. I think around here is pretty good, something like this. And I'm, maybe I'll make it a little bit taller, something like, or a little bit shorter, something like this. You can see on this particular image, there's like a cut off here, right? So I don't really want that to show. And this whole background, maybe we, we this, in fact, let's go and grab a background from from uh, Pexels. Let's, let's put something different in there. So let's go to the Pexels website. Let's just type in background. We'll find a different background. We'll use something else. Let's just find something. Uh, let's just see. Um, in fact, I want to look at something like abstract, right? So let's see. Or maybe we'll look for, um, let's just click on background. Let's find something here that we can use as a background. You can pick anything you like. I, I kind of like these sort of uh, stars. So let's use that. Let's drag this to the side. We'll go into our assets. Let's just uh, go ahead and drag this image into here. So we don't have to really rename it. It's fine. We can drag that into Photoshop. It's going to be on the top layer. And we want that to sit behind the picture of me. So that's nice sitting behind. And we'll just grab the handle. We'll press Shift and Alt key. And we can just drag this out. It's going to be in the background here. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily use this image, but we can just kind of use it as an example, right? Now, let's go ahead and click the confirmation button up here. Problem is, is this image is now covering our white spacing, our red lines and our reserve space. So let's click on that picture and we'll go to the opacity and just bring it down a bit, just temporarily like this, so that we can see where we don't want to add any written content. So all of this blue section, all of this red section, we want to avoid adding written content in those sections there. Um, and what we'll do, in fact, is just drag this image down a little bit. Can you see like it's kind of got this little cutoff point here, like where the photo was taken. So I just want to drag it down and we'll maybe make it a little bit bigger, something like this, uh, like this. And you can go ahead and experiment. I'm just going to do this a little bit quicker. And I usually would. I'll play around with this a little bit more, but let's click on the top canvas um, and we want to add some text. So let's grab the text tool and we'll add some text in here. Let's just say uh, web designers, something like this. And maybe we'll just drag that. We don't really want to place it there. Let's place it over here somewhere. Something like on this side. And I'm going to make that text 
uh, let's just click outside and make the text the white color because our background's black, right? Mainly black. Um, and I want to add the word London above it. London. Let's just type in London. And I'm going to just drag that to the side here like this. Something like London Web Designers. That's what I'm about. And on the other side, we can just press Control C because we selected both of them, right? So click on the top one, hold down the Shift key, click the one below, press Control C, then Control V to paste. And we'll drag it to this side. Um, and we're going to take the word London and drag it over here. This is like roughly done. And uh, let's just type in free video. And then underneath here, we'll type in tutorials. Now, obviously, I would have spent a bit more time doing this properly, but for now, um, I think it's going to be okay. So let's go ahead and click on the image here and set its opacity all the way back up again. And you've got this background now, right? So let's add that to Twitter. It's not perfect by any means, but it gives you a bit of an idea um, of how to create the Twitter background with your picture and all that good stuff and the text on the side. And obviously we would have probably spent a bit more time on this and, and laid out the text a little bit better. Maybe this can shift to the left a little bit and sort out the formatting, but generally, it's okay we could we could make it better but for now just as an example it's okay so i'm going to save this i already saved it as a photoshop file it's going to export it and whenever we export we're going to try and export at the highest value for jpeg files right that way uh, when we upload it twitter does run some compression on it so it won't compress it too too much so let's just go ahead and save this let's try and add that image to our twitter profile so let's close this, uh, let's close down this window. We'll click on the edit button here. We'll click on this picture, it's a little camera icon. And we'll go ahead and select this Twitter header and click open. And then you can see you can scale it in and out. We could scale it a bit, but because we set it to the correct size, we don't really need to scale it. I'm gonna click apply and then click save. And let's just let it update. Now you can see the background image is updated. It's got my picture there with the text on the side of it. I don't really like this picture, so I'm going to quickly uh, go ahead and click edit, click on the little icon here. And if I was wise, I saved the original one here. This is the original one with just a black background and save it. And you get an idea of how to do that now, right? So I've just spent a bit more time on this one and laid it out a bit better. But in general, that's how you do it. And you can make the text a bit bigger if you want it to be a bit more legible. But if you design it in this way, then it's going to fit perfectly on the desktop on tablets, on mobile devices, different phones, different devices, on your Twitter app, on your phone, it will work very, very well. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you is how to resize images correctly for Twitter posts. So Twitter has different size images depending on the type of post that you're going to create. So if you're creating an image, uh, just like a single image uh, for a post, something like this or something like these here then twitter advised that you size it to a specific uh, dimensions and the dimensions for a single image is 1200 pixels by 765 so if we go ahead and open up photoshop and we create another new document let's just go and create a new document in here and we make it 1200 by 765 and click create this will be the perfect size to post an image on Twitter. So let's go ahead and grab something that we can use as an example. I'm just gonna head over to my own website. Let's click on my portfolio and let's just take uh, an image. We'll take an image from my portfolio. Maybe we'll take, um, let's have a look. Let's do, uh, let's look at this identity project, right? So we've got a few different images in here and I'm going to grab one of these images. Let's place it into this folder on my desktop here. So let's grab, um, let's just grab this picture here. We'll drag this one out. So we're gonna use this image and we're gonna resize it just to make sure that it fits correctly on uh, the Twitter image that we're gonna upload. So I'm gonna drag that into Photoshop. You can see there's a little bit of a gap down the side here, right? So we just wanna press the Shift key and the Alt key. And we're just gonna drag it out so that it sits just outside of the uh, canvas here. You can see it's just sitting outside. We'll tick this option off and maybe we'll shift it up just slightly right so it's nicely aligned like this this is a little website project that i work for one of my clients so i'm just going to export this and we'll, again we'll export it at the highest setting and we'll call this 
uh, let's just call this Twitter. Single image post example uh, dash zero one, right? You could save that as a template. So you could save this control S to save. We save it as a Photoshop file and we could save this as um, a Twitter image template, right? So we can call it Twitter image example template dash zero one. If we save it as a Photoshop file, then we can always open up this Photoshop file and this will, we can just drag a different image in here and resize it and it will always be the right dimensions that we want. Now let's go ahead and minimize this and we'll open up our web browser. Let's just open up the web browser here and um, we, let's make a tweet, right? So let's click on the tweet button and the first thing we'll do is take that image we just created, this sample one, and we're just going to drag that into Twitter here. So here we can see the image and now we can create the tweet above it. So I'm just going to copy this text here and we'll copy maybe this first paragraph. Remember Twitter is quite limited in the amount of text that you can use. And then we just want to put a link to the project view project details, something like this. And we'll paste in the link and then maybe we'll put in a couple of hashtags, right? Something like this. You can see the image sits really nice now, right? It's clean and it sits in exactly the place that we want it to be. And we'll go ahead and click the tweet button and that will upload the image. And now we should be able to see that. Let's just click view. We can see the tweet here. We can click on my profile, scroll down and you can see the picture and it's exactly the same dimensions as what we uploaded. So it will be exactly the right size to display on Twitter. So that's how you create a single image or resize a single image for your Twitter post. Okay, so sometimes on Twitter we want to post more than one image. So let's look at an example where we're posting two different images on the same tweet, right? So maybe we want to put two different images on this same tweet post, but let's create a new one. Let's go back to my website and we'll find a different image. So let's have a look at maybe this, uh, let's have a look at Alva PC, right? So if you ever want any PC components, then definitely go check out this website. It's called Alva PC. They do really good uh, prices on um, computer equipment, but for now, what we're going to do is uh, drag two of these images out, right? So let's drag, let's drag this one here and drag the mobile one, right? So we've got these two images and the image size needs to be 700 by 800 pixels when, we, when we're doing two images together on the same tweet. Let's go ahead and open up Photoshop and we're gonna create a new canvas and it's going to be 700 by 800, 700 by 800. It's gonna be this shape here, right? more of a square, sort of vertical shape. So let's go ahead and um, go back to this image here and drag it into here. And we're just going to resize it to something like this here. Okay. And now we're going to export that and we'll export it. And we'll just call this uh, two dash images zero one. And then we're going to grab the other image, which is uh, this one, the mobile phone. And we're going to resize that one as well to something like this. And we're going to export that as well. And we'll call that two dash images dash zero two. All right. So we've got these two images that we're going to sit side by side, these two here in our tweet. So let's go ahead and go back to Twitter and we'll resize this a little bit. So something like this and we'll create a tweet and we'll drag both of these images in at the same time. Let's make sure we've got both of them. Let's grab, uh, let's close that. Let's select both of them at the same time and drag them in. Now you can see, see they sit side by side like this and we can create another tweet quickly. So let's just do this here and we'll copy this first bit of text and we say view more project info and let's put a link to that project and we just put in our hashtags like we normally do let's put dcp web and we just put a web designers 
hashtag in here. And let's tweet this. Click the tweet button. And when we scroll down, we can see the images sit nicely side by side. So if they're quite wide images, they might get cropped a little bit, but these will sit perfectly on that side by side resolution. So this is the optimum size for two images. And that is 700 by 800 pixels. Okay, let's take a look at example where we want to post three images to Twitter. So each time we post a different style of image, so we've got so far one example where there's one image, we've got another example where there's two images, and what if we want to post three images? Really, the left side image will be a full size image, and then the, these two uh, on this side, there'll be actually two images sitting here side by side. So we have to create the image of that specific size for this as well. So let's go ahead and go back to my portfolio, and we're going to grab three images this time from a project. So let's take uh, let's take window shadings, right? This is a nice project that we worked on, and we're going to drag three images in. So let's just resize this a little bit, and we'll grab these three images. So we've got these three images here, and we need to resize them so they fit nicely onto a tweet with three images inside the content. So I think it will be best to have this image as the main image on the left hand side and then these two images can be the images that stack one on top of the other on the right hand side so this first image needs to be 800 by 600 and these two images on the side that sit by the side need to be 1200 by 686 pixels right let's make the first image now we're kind of lucky because we've already got this canvas here and this uh this particular image is 700 by 800 and that's exactly what we need for the left side image so really this size image is actually correct um, so let's go ahead and save this file actually let's call let's just save this save as and we'll call this um, Twitter this was the example post that we created right this one example two times images so that that's the example uh, Photoshop file for two times images but this is, uh, we can also use this same one for the left side image for, for, for um, a tweet that contains three images. Let's drag this first image in here. I'm just going to resize it to something like, uh, something like this. Let's just move it to the left a little bit, somewhere around here. And we'll accept that and we're going to export it. And <clears throat> I'm going to call it 01 left side right and let's just call it uh, in fact let's just yeah let's call it zero one left side dash zero one and then we'll save this as a JPEG file and then we're going to create a new canvas and it's going to be 1200 by 686 we'll click create and we're going to drag this image in here and we'll resize it to something like this and let's just accept that and we'll export it and this one will be uh, zero 01. And instead of left, it's going to be called right side image dash zero 01. And then we'll drag the other image in here. And we're going to resize that one slightly. Let's just bring it a bit closer. And we'll accept it. And we'll export this one. And we'll call it zero 01 right side image two, the second right side image. Let's save this. So let's try and run this tweet. Let's go back to Twitter and we want to drag three images this time, right? So we're going to make a tweet and let's find those three images. This this one here and this these three here basically, right? The 0, 01, 0, 02 and 0, uh, 03 here, these three images. Let's drag them into here. You can see this one stacks on the left hand side because it was the larger image and these two sit on the side correctly now, yeah? They look exactly as they should. So now we can write a tweet about these three images. Let's do window shadings. And we'll copy that first paragraph and then view more info and we'll copy this URL we'll paste it into here and then we'll just do our hashtags let's just do hash DCP web DCP web and then web designers and now we can tweet this one let's tweet it and now you can see all three images sit nicely side by side. So creating the right size image is quite important. 
if you just drag random size images then they might get cropped or they might you may not really see the full image or what you're expecting so if we click here we can see that image we can scrub to the side and then we see the two larger images right or we can click on the larger image to see it and now we can see three images we've done one for two images and we've done one for one image and i guess you know what's coming next Okay, so the final image that we're going to create is, or the final tweet we're going to create is one with four pictures inside of it, four images, right? So the size of those images need to be 1200 by 600 pixels. So let's go back to my website and we're going to grab four different pictures. Let's just grab four images. Let's grab uh, this pure sanity. Uh, we'll grab one of these. So let's just get this folder open. Let's move it to the side here. And I'm just going to create, just to make life a little bit easier, I'm going to create a little folder in here and just call it four times images and we'll do the editing in here It'll just be a bit easier to find them afterwards so let's grab this picture this one here and we're going to grab four different images let's grab this one here they're all sort of uh, e-commerce websites right so let's drag this one in here that's two and we want to grab another e-commerce one so let's find one uh, in fact it'll be easier to go to e-commerce let's do um this Bubsy Boo project, this was a nice project to work on. We'll grab a mobile phone version and then uh, let's do um, let's do the Star Wars website, right? This was a cool project I worked on many years ago, but um, it's a nice project, this Star Wars website. So we've got four different images and they're all of slightly different sizes. They're not all exactly the same size, but we want to make them all 1200 by 600 pixels. So let's go to Photoshop and Let's go ahead and we should really save this Photoshop file from our last job. So let's save this as, let's quickly save it. If you save these files and when you when it comes to creating more tweets, you have almost like templates set up for them, right? So it kind of makes sense to do it, do it this way. Um, and we're gonna call it Twitter uh, two times. So this will be um, three times images, yeah? For the right side. So three times images, right side. So we save that as a file. We can start to close down these uh, Photoshop files. We don't really need them open. Let's just save our work as we go. And we can close these all down. So we've got the original Photoshop files saved. Let's create a new one. And it's gonna be 1200 by 600 pixels. And we're gonna take these images from this folder. Let's drag the first one in. And we're gonna resize this to something like this. And we'll just accept that. Let's export. Let's just set it to high quality and then we'll go into this four times image and we'll call this one uh, four times image dash zero one. That's the first image. Then we'll drag the second one in here. And let's just move that up a little bit to somewhere like here, right there. And we'll accept that. Let's export it. And we'll call it four times images dash 0, 02 let's do zero, 03 something like this here and you can play around and you know align your images accordingly i think around here is pretty good and we'll export this and that will be zero, 03 image and then finally the zero, 04 image something like this. this is not the best image but we'll, we'll, we'll use it for now it's fine as a sample and we'll do zero four so we've got four images it doesn't take long once you've got the template set up it's pretty easy to just drag them and resize them quite quick remember you can do this in photoshop you can do it in gimp if you don't remember all the sizes i've given you throughout this tutorial don't don't forget you can always go to my blog post and you can see all of the exact sizes you need there as well uh, inside my blog post you'll find a link to that in the youtube description so we've got the four images here let's go ahead and um, go to twitter we'll create another tweet and i'm just going to say example e-commerce projects by dcp web designers right normally i actually drag and drop the images first before i start typing it doesn't really matter too much but normally i like to drag and drop them first and then do the typing afterwards it can be a little bit fiddly to drag and drop them sometimes but this looks all okay you can see the images are nicely laid out so i'm just going to hit the enter key and say view more example 
projects here and we'll go to the portfolio let's go to e-commerce we'll copy this link paste it here we'll put in our DCP web hashtag and our web designers hashtag and then we'll tweet it and then we'll have a tweet with four images right here and we can click on them and they all look good and glorious and all that good stuff right here you can see them okay so we've been through all of the different image sizes so so far we've covered the 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 uh, social media profile the background image we did a single tweet image and we resized that we did a tweet with two images a tweet with three images and now a tweet with four images and that's pretty much all you can do in terms of images on twitter unless they come up with some new uh tweets that i haven't heard of yet but i'm pretty sure this is a uh, as much as you can do you can actually add square images as well you can see this is a nice square one it shows um, um, an example I just basically I've just done 10 million views on YouTube right so I thought I'll celebrate that a little bit and make a tweet about it um, so there you go there's like uh, you know one of the milestones that I hit on YouTube okay that's awesome as well so there's your four images there's your three images there's your two image there's your single image and then at the top we did the profile uh, background and we've got the profile icon here as well so that's all of the images for twitter don't forget you can always go to my blog post over here again i'll put a link to that in the youtube description click on the definitive up-to-date guide for social media click on twitter and then you can see all of those images and you can see all of the safe zones and all of the layouts for all of the content and i've given you some good examples here you can see a single image a double image three and four as well just like we've done in this tutorial okay don't forget to uh, keep an eye on my youtube channel because i'm going to be making social media image size tutorials for facebook and for linkedin and instagram and all the other different social media accounts as well let's go ahead and minimize this we can close this folder that's the end of this tutorial i hope you find it useful and i look forward to seeing you on the next dcp